I've been studying the kingdom of God for about uh, 18, 19 years. And uh, every once in a while, I found it very uh, profitable to uh, just back up and talk about the basics of the kingdom of God. What do you think of when you hear the term kingdom of God? Well, it all depends on which uh, part of the uh, eschatological spectrum you're on. Uh, we hear something about the kingdom, we think it's all future, or there is a group of people that think it's all past, it's all fulfilled. But I want to tell you that the kingdom of God is, so let's start from there. Let's start with Matthew, and let me just talk to you about what the kingdom is. Whatever it is, this is what the Bible says about it. Early in the days of Jesus' ministry, he uh, was filled with the Spirit, baptized, and uh, before he was baptized, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness and this is what he said. Repent, change your mind, for the kingdom of God has come. Actually, he said kingdom of heaven. In the book of Matthew, which is the, especially a Jewish gospel, you won't find the kingdom of God. You'll find the kingdom of heaven and a reference to the kingdom uh, 54 times in the book of Matthew. So John said, repent, change your mind, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to examine that, with, uh, that one with you and two others before we're through. So what, what's he saying? Does anybody know what he's talking about? Who there has a point of reference by which there could be any understanding? What would you think had you never heard anything about anything regarding the future. And John the Baptist, weird in every way, he's weird in uh, dress, he's weird in, uh, in his appetite and what he's eating, and uh, he's just weird. So he strides in out of the wilderness saying, change your mind, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So whatever the kingdom is, it's worth uh, it demands and is worth changing your mind about everything in order to line up with it. Now that's a pretty bitter, bitter pill to swallow if you, uh, if you don't intend to make a change. So whatever the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is, uh, in order to believe it and it's align with it, you have to repent so get your repenter all ready to, to be activated. You're going to have to change your mind. Now let's look at the, the, the reason for it. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, we need to find out two things. What the kingdom of heaven is, what he's talking about, and uh, what, uh, what's the reason for changing your mind. So this is what he says. The kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom of heaven, is at hand. Or the translators say, come near. Well, I'd like to think that if something's at hand, it's, uh, it's something within reach, right? Okay. So John the Baptist says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is, is here. It's on the way here. It's reachable from where you are. But you don't take it until you turn loose of everything else. When you believe that the kingdom of God is extant or in existence, you have to reevaluate everything else you believe and if what you believe does not line up with this new entity that has been received into your life, you have to change your mind about it. Pretty tough, isn't it? The kingdom of God, what are the kingdom of heaven? And by the way, those terms are used interchange 
interchanged in Paul's epistles and in the other gospels and so on. And, uh, but here, it's the kingdom of heaven. It's the kingdom of the heavens. So just remember as we approach and reapproach a study of the kingdom, whatever it is you have to repent to receive it. And when you receive it and repent, it's because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and there is something about the kingdom that demands attention to the point of changing your mind about everything else. So if I'm up until now you've never heard about the kingdom and you find out about the kingdom, get ready to change your mind. Now, I'll rush through to the, to the next one. Uh, next in the uh, model prayer, in the, uh, uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer, which is the prayer of, uh, of Jesus, we call it the model prayer. Uh, and it, it's vital. Every part of it is vital. And uh, Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be hallowed. So this is indicative that we're talking to somebody who needs to be talked to in royal terms. This is the king in heaven, and prayer is talking to him. Our father, he is a father, in heaven. He is in the ruling position of the universe. Our father in heaven, hallowed or revered, respected, obeyed, be your name. Hallowed be your name. And then the next part of the prayer is a shocking thing when you think about it. It says simply uh, in, in Jesus in 610 of the, uh, uh, of the book of Matthew. He says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be hallowed. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, uh, quick questions. Does God want to send his kingdom to you when you pray? Why are you praying your kingdom come? What does it mean? What, uh, where is it coming from? Where is it going to when it comes from? Think about it. You're praying every time you pray the model prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We'll talk more about this in future times. And it's very vital. Prayer is the breath of heaven. Prayer is the, is the uh, uh, protocol, the exercise of the kingdom. Now, uh, in 633, another passage, key on the kingdom. Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Think of the three verses. Think of the three verses. Matthew 3, 2. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 3, 2. Matthew 6, 10. And Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom and all these things in context. What you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to live. That's where most of your salary goes, you know. If you will tend to my business, God says, I'll tend to yours. Seek first the kingdom. Look at those. Say, God, reveal to me what your kingdom is and how I can align myself with it, receive the assignment of the kingdom as a kingdom citizen, and live the kingdom life. God bless you. Thank you.
Jack Taylor here. One of the most exciting features of my life for 15 years has been the privilege of participating in Word Spirit Power Conferences. One of these is coming up in June, June 21, 22, and 23 in Abilene, Texas at the Beltway Church in Abilene. Join us for this unforgettable conference. See you there.